Joseph Isaronovich Dugashvili, Soso, Besso, Koba, and some of his um, underground uh, monikers, Oddball Ossip, Ossip Koba, Popmarked Oscar, the Caucasian, the Milkman, the Loper, the Pockmarked One, the Staggerer, uh, David, the Priest, Joe Pox, and in the end, Koba Stalin, J. Jugashvili Stalin, and finally, J. V. Stalin. Stalin combined a very unusual combination in a politician. He was both a brigand, he could arrange a murder if you wanted him to, and a sort of intellectual, in that he could write an article, come up with a theory, um, uh, he knew his history very well. He fancied himself as a romantic poet and wrote you know, fairly good poetry and, was, and actually made his name in Georgia um, as a poet. It's a, real, it's a real kingdom of poets, Georgia. But he was also sung beautifully. He had a voice that made people weep with, with, um, with poignancy. And he, he was the sort of chief choir boy in his school. Um, and he sung in the opera house in, in Tbilisi, um, you know, to, to huge crowds. And so you have to face the fact that he, was, he had these strange talents, a surprising talents, sensitive talents. And of course, he was an extremely sensitive person. Um, that, it, that didn't mean, mean he was kind, but his sensibilities were very sharp. Uh, that was part of what was so terrifying about him, in fact. Well, this is really a study of, of Stalin before power. So it's called Young Stalin, but it actually takes you up to when he's about 40. So it's from his birth in 1878 in a small town in Georgia, on the edges of the Tsarist Empire of Nicholas II, right up until the very beginning of of 1918 when the revolutions just happened. So it takes you up to the October Revolution, basically. He starts off as the, the bullied, um, sickly son of a, of a drunken cobbler and his very determined wife in this small town. And he ends up as one of the rulers of the Russian Empire, along with Lenin and Trotsky and a few others. I mean, before the, all these new archives and, you know, to which I've had access with great luck, with great luck he was regarded as a sort of madman um, a sort of psychopathic madman, but without any characteristics at all, just a sort of grey, talentless um, lunatic. You know, I think what my book shows is that he was actually a very rounded character, a gifted character, a very, very exceptional man, you know, in every, in every sense. Now, we may not, that may not be comfortable news for us, but the fact is he was a very gifted politician. You know, there's a few of these people in history who are just fascinating. Everything they say and think and write is fascinating. And their laundry list is fascinating. And I've read their laundry lists. I try and write history books that um, are readable by anybody, that are scholarly and based on scholarship. That's very important to me. And they're based on original archive. That's very important. Um, and, and are free of the, um, the customs of history writing, you know, that are, that are not shackled by the fact that this is how you're supposed to write about Stalin, this is how you're supposed to write about Soviet Russia. I, I start from a clean slate and I try and write as it happened, as it really was. But, you know, the more human I've made him in my books, the more I've shown him as a real person, the more frightening and, and chilling and tragic a figure he, he has become. I mean, there are times when you've sort of, especially writing about him in power, when you literally sort of cry, you just can't believe that there's something so awful is happening and that he's signed off on it. There's a great irony that the boy I show in this young Stalin book is, is in fact being, is now in fact become the greatest Russian czar that ever lived. And I predict that within five years, Russian schoolchildren will be taught about Stalin the Great, Peter the Great, Catherine the Great.